So hello friends, welcome to EduTap. So in the topper series interview of UPSC EPFO AO, EO AO examination, today we have with us Mr. Malik, who has secured rank 135 in this examination. So uh, I welcome you, uh, Malik, to the EduTap. And also on behalf of entire team of EduTap, I congratulate you for achieving this milestone. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. So uh, Malik, before starting, the very first thing that, what, what did you feel? What did you realize? I can say, what, what was your first reaction when you saw your name in the Holy PDF? Uh, actually, I didn't saw my name personally. I asked a okay. friend to look it up because I was so scared to look it by myself. And uh, so he told me that, okay, you have cleared this exam. So I jumped and I screamed and uh, rest. <laughs> we were very, we all were very happy. Okay, great. So uh, if we talk about uh, your background, so kindly do let us know your background in brief, like your educational qualification or your working experience, if you have any. Yes, yes. Uh, so I completed my graduation in civil engineering and I've graduated in 2050. And after that, I started a business of a tire retreading with my partners, which were also my friends at that time. And where I worked for five years and uh, before this Corona pandemic, I quit that and uh, started this preparation as this EPFO exam was, uh, I guess the notification was in January 2020. Right. So I found it as a good uh, opportunity for me. So I uh, took it up and I started preparing. Okay. So if you talk about any hardship phase, because, uh, because if you talk about this examination process, so this examination had the process of around more than two and a half years, right? So did you yes. face any hardship while preparing for this examination and how did keep you, how did you keep yourself motivated? Yes, sir. Uh, I would say that, that this Corona was a blessing in disguise for me, particularly because I was new in this field of uh, education and this learning because I left my uh, graduation in 2015. So I started a little late for this process. So Corona gave me some time because the exam was postponed a few times, a uh, couple of times I will, uh, to be precise. So it bought me enough time uh, to read and uh, to explore the other subjects as well. So yeah, there were a few challenges that the anxiety was there that okay, now the examination will be again postponed and the dates were not yet uh, finalized. There was no certainty about when they will be conducting these examinations. But yes, those were some challenges, but I took it as an opportunity and uh, keep on uh, reading and keep on exploring the other subjects and uh, syllabus of it. So overall, I will say that the Corona helped me a lot okay. in uh, this uh, selection. So it had a positive impact on your preparation, right? Yes, yes exactly. But I wouldn't say that it was uh, good for everybody else. Right, right, right. It was a blessing in disguise for me particularly. Okay. Yes. Smolik, uh, in a preparation stage and after getting selection, so a lot of things play a crucial role in our preparation as well as in selection process, right? So what are those three things that helped you reach there? Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, your voice was breaking a bit. Can you please repeat? Yeah, I, I am saying that a lot of things play a crucial role in the preparation stage as well as after getting selection, right? So what are those three things that played a crucial role or that helped you to reach there? Yes, sir. So first and foremost thing about the preparation that I learned was that that uh, focus uh, must be on the concepts and rather than mugging up the things. Uh, so first that the concepts clarity should be there in each and every subject. And the second thing for this examination, I opted for mocks as well. So a lot of mocks I have given, uh, which gave a practice uh, that it helped us in the time management that in what manner you will uh, do the exam, exam paper that which subject you will have to uh, pick up the first. For example, I will uh, say that by maths and reasoning, I didn't have that speed enough. So while preparing mocks, I always uh, ended this question, I attended this questions of maths and reasoning at the last so that I can uh, do it accordingly. So mocks and uh, giving such as the additive mocks helped a lot to me. Uh, this preparation stage uh, consists of many things. Mocks is a very important part of it. And apart from that, the interview process, which I went through, I gave two mocks as well, and one with the editor also. That eventually prepare you for the real, uh, the D-Day. And it sounds like that uh, you are giving another mock, right? If you have done many, then it won't be a big thing for you. So that helped a lot. And... Uh, with the preparation and after the results, everything is, if you are sailed through, everything uh, will be in your favor. 
So that's the uh, part I think that in the preparation stage. Okay, okay. So if you talk about <clears throat> overall time, so what do you think? How much over time, uh, overall time is required for the preparation of this examination? Um, sir, actually, it depends upon the uh, students to student because I was a science graduate, so I didn't have the knowledge of accountancy or the labor laws, and the some other subjects were also there. So it took me a few time for to clear uh, to read about the accounting, the industrial relation, labor laws, which were not which were totally new to me. Even the economy part was also new to me. So it differs from student to student, but I uh, guess if, if if a student is determined and uh, they uh, focus well. We can clear this exam or any exam for that matter. So, uh, Malik, you were also involved in your business, so you were self-employed. So, how did you manage time, and how did you balance both business as well as your preparation part? Uh, actually, I uh, took a break from the business after this uh, uh, thing, and uh, after Corona pandemic and the lockdown, the business was almost uh, on the halt because everything uh, uh, was not functioning well. Uh, so, I. Uh, got that time as well and uh, i was managing over the phone as well as my partners also helped me uh, that they were uh, handling on behalf of me so they actually were the uh, quite uh, supporting uh, so i didn't actually pay much attention towards our business right so uh, molik if you talk about recruitment as specifically so and if you talk about sources and guidance so if you if you get the right sources and right guidance so that means you you got the dronachar right so yeah. what were the sources of your preparation for this examination uh so see there are uh, some books which are been preferred and uh, which are such as lakshmi kant for polity the machine for economy and spectrum for history these books are so well refined and so well written that if one can go through it with some uh, guidance of course uh, if you don't understand the concepts of it you have to uh, ask few seniors or few faculties for that so these three books for these three subjects uh, there are many but i'll uh, for this epo this three were main uh, books for me and apart from that your own preparation uh, helps you when you encounter yourself with the different pushes that okay i am not understanding this that means you have to self evaluate yourself as well while preparing so apart from this books you also have to introspect yourself and ask the questions about uh, what uh, can be uh, like rather predicting questions okay if you have completed one topic and then predict that how many questions can be formed out of it i had an exercise with my few fellow friends that we used to complete we used to pick up each up each uh, subject and we used to make 15 20 or 25 questions out of it for a particular uh, chapter and then we used to exchange that and ask each other such thing so that exercise can be followed by the experience which can help you to cover up the entire subject uh, in fractions Molly, if you talk about the syllabus, so uh, we see that the syllabus uh, consists of ten components, right? So around sixty to seventy percent of the syllabus uh, is overlapping with the civil services, right? Yes. So since you were not a civil services aspirant, so it was difficult for you. And didn't you have any fear in your mind that how will I complete since uh, civil services aspirant have edge over this uh, examination since sixty seventy percent syllabus are same, right? So didn't you didn't you have any fear in your mind, or how did you complete the entire syllabus of ten components? uh firstly i didn't actually know about that this much of the un prize about the civil service aspirant mujhe itna zyada pata nahi tha ki itna zyada padha hota hai so i was not aware about it so i was not scared <laughs> to be honest because i was not into this preparation stage before this covid so i entered and i when i entered everyone went online and they were uh, very educators and many faculties were there online available so when i went to the Process when they were started reading polity economy from uh, uh, Kapil Sikta sir and any uh, very uh, renowned faculties are also there online. They were like so much of a, a helping nature. They they were conducting live online classes and all. I didn't feel anything different uh, from the civil services uh, experience. And honestly, मुझे नहीं पता था कि ये हो जाएगा because I was just an another aspirant. and i didn't uh, have the confidence in me that i will be able to the prelims but since i get enough time and uthe sath preparation bhi tha hota gaya and ho gaya jaise tha so 
सो कहीं ना कहीं आपकी अनअवेयरनेस जो थी और जो आप नर्वस नहीं थे सो दैट दैट डेफिनेटली हेल्प्ड यू टू सेल थ्रू राइट डेफिनेटली हेल्प्स है बिकॉज़ आई सॉ इट इन व्हेन आई वाज इन दिल्ली आई आल्सो सॉ दैट दैट पीपल व्हेन आर व्हेन आर यू अवेयर अबाउट दोस इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स दैट इज नेसेसरी बट दिस अननेसेसरी प्रेशर दैट स्टूडेंट्स बिल्ड इटसेल्फ ये अपने आप निकलता है ये अपने आप वो बिल्ड कर देते हैं व्हेन यू सी पीपल प्रिपेयरिंग इन दिल्ली और इन सम अनदर पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्री it builds a pressure that acha ye bhi kar raha hai ye bhi kar raha hai ye bhi kar raha hai mujhe inse zyada karna hai so that uska itna zyada zarurat nahi hai aisa mujhe lagta hai apna preparation pe focus karo that will be more than enough right right so if we talk about daily plans so what was your daily study plan for this examination uh actually main raat ko zyada padhta hu i was a late night uh, reader so i go to sleep in the early in the morning of 5 6 or 7 and uh, i used to work up late in the afternoon like one or two this probably at this time i uh, used to have a breakfast and after that uh, uh, i started like two to three hours sitting uh, with the first three for the newspaper one and one and a half hour after that uh, i'll complete all those things which i left in the night and that i am not actually uh, good I'm, i cannot sit for like three four hours straight away i used to take a little little breaks for two hours two hours two hours and then i uh, started to feel like that only but at night after 12 i can sit for like 2 3 hours even 4 hours sleep okay so molik if we talk about current affairs so current affairs play a very crucial role in any examination right, right? so did you refer multiple sources for preparing current component or did you refer only single component for this sir for uh, personally i will say that uh, you to mention very rightly the current affair is very very important and uh, i'll say that to follow one newspaper i uh, prefer indian express and only any one pick any one from any institute you like but pick one only because what happens is that the uh, it's like only either reading a newspaper right if you follow one magazine you uh, get into that their uh, sense of writing their uh, language and everything so uski habit ban jati hai सो so, उसी को फॉलो करो चाहे कोई भी इंस्टीट्यूट हो उससे को मैं करता था सो आई फॉलोड वन इंस्टीट्यूट मंथली मैगजीन एंड डेली न्यूज पेपर वॉज ऑल्सो देर सो एंड दैट मैनर आई कम्पीटेड विद करेंट अफेयर सेक्शन Okay, right. So, if you talk about standard books followed by for different components, so what were those books? Uh, sir, first I will say that for quality, Lakshmi Khan. Uh, for economy, Ramesh Singh. Uh, for history, I will say the Spectrum was the best. and uh, uh, what are other subjects for industrial relation and even was they were not uh, that complete books i referred i read the bear acts from the ministry of labor and employment's websites for accountancy i uh, preferred ncert for 11th and 12th standard and the basic one because i was not uh, gonna go for the in depth analysis for that also and uh, for social security and the other things the schemes and other things were also from the uh, labor ministry at the government website the pib uh, websites and all so the government sources are the most authentic ones that should be followed by anyone uh, because there are very discrepancy when you see that in they there are some certain amounts of facts that are been missing when they are they printed or there might be any other things. so this were some of the standard books that i uh, what about general science and general mental ability uh general science uh, i will say that lucent's general science was nice but i wasn't i, I hadn't uh, referred that yes i read the ncert for 6 to 10th uh, science uh, for the basic uh, things and for maths and reasoning i will say that there are uh, if you give mocks right you will able to solve many questions in the mocks itself for the maths reasoning and english and uh, i will say that there are many uh, previous year question test series for ssc or for any uh, uh, bank exam or you will find lot of material for maths reasoning english and it should be a daily exercise uh, that you should solve like 15 20 questions so that you can develop a speed in that because i was very slow with that subject okay uh, so molik if you talk about uh, preparation and revision so pre- pre- preparing anything is quite a long process right but if we talk about revision so we revise the things whenever exam approaches so how did you manage your revision component so uh, did you make any short notes or highlighted notes so what was your strategy with respect to the revision uh, sir i would say for the notes i will say that i have made the notes by myself i have handwritten notes because i you i had a tendency to learn while writing i i was very uh, i am not good at the learning things from the book itself 
So I made that notes. Uh, my handwritten notes were very useful. And if you write something uh, in your notes, it's it's imprinted. Like if you have to, because you read, you write, and then you recall that. So in revision also, it helps very lot. Uh, you just have to scroll the pages, and you know exactly from which page you have written which topic. So it will save your time as well, as well, and uh, it gives you a faster revision. So that was my uh, thing that I. Uh, for my preparation. So you followed this strategy for all the components mentioned in the syllabus? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have every, everything. I had notes for quality, economic history. Okay, okay. Yes, so Molik, if you talk about MCQ or test series, right? So test series is always crucial before actual examination. So did you join any mock test or test series? Uh, sir, mock test I have uh, given for this additive mock test I uh, took for the uh, MCQs uh, and all. Those were very nice. And uh, some other institutes were also there, uh, which were providing mocks. I have given like many mock tests before giving this actual one. And I had developed an exercise that I once in a week, uh, probably on the Sunday, I'll uh, give like two or three mocks and review them in the night. And that, that day was my off that I won't study that, that day, just give the mocks and all. Okay. So I have given a lot of mocks and that helped a lot. So, Molik, you have referred that you have uh, you have said that you have referred the, the mock test of EduTab. So, did you find them useful for your actual examination? Definitely, definitely, definitely useful. Okay. And the quality of your questions were very nice, right? Those were some arbitrary questions were not there. The quality of question was very nice and was very similar uh, with the actual exam. Okay. So, uh, since uh, entire component is new for you, right? If, if we talk about this examination, so uh, all components are new for you. But if, if I talk about what was the most difficult component which you faced difficulty while preparing? Uh, in subjects, uh, I will say that the accounting was very difficult. Okay. And uh, labor laws was also uh, that area that I have never read before. So those two areas I was scared of, I will say that, that if the questions might have been asked from this area, I might have used some of the other parts were uh, manageable, like quality, economic history. Those were, uh, I was quite confident for that part. But this too was a bit scary. Okay. So uh, this was about the recruitment test. So if we talk about interview, right? So uh, there are various uh, areas which can be covered in the interview, like it can be HR, it can be current affairs, it can be the organization for which you are appearing for, right? And if it can be from yes. theoretical uh, part also, the syllabus which is mentioned in the notification. So what were the areas which were covered in your interview? So my interview was quite uh, good. I, I was very confident about my interview uh, because the interview, uh, when I went there, I was the last one to go. So they were all, I guess they were relaxed or they, I don't know what was their mindset. Uh, my interview was uh, uh, with the chairman, sir, Mandi, sir. Uh, uh, he was an ex-IFS uh, IFS. and uh, he started asking me from the IR part, the national relations part. So the chairman one was very uh, keen in asking about international relations. And uh, fortunately, I had developed that interest in IR uh, and I was able to answer much of the questions for the chairman itself. So chairman was uh, uh, very happy with my uh, conversation. It was not like an interview. He was like, we were discussing the IR things. And when I was like, I was missing some things, he was advising me, okay, you, you missed that part, you missed that part. So it was more of a discussion part uh, rather than an interview. And the rest of the member also followed the same trail. And my interview was more on the, uh, like not was factual, I will say that they were more on the opinion base. Like many opinion based questions were asked from me that how the relations of Pakistan and Afghanistan are there. Uh, what will be the future of Pakistan and Afghanistan? What is the future of India with respect to these countries? What is the, uh, like other members asked me that, uh, how do you think that EC is working? That other member asked how the ED is working. So the most what the opinion based questions were majorly asked. And uh, so I was able to give a positive and balanced approach. And I thought that only sailed me through because in the written, I guess my marks were not that much good because I, I did, honestly I didn't tally my marks that how much I have scored in the uh, written part. But I will say that the interview was the thing that sailed me through. So how many members were there in your interview panel? Uh, four members, sir. one chairman and three members. So, uh, was interview panel cordial or they were harsh on you? No, no, they were very cordial. They were very, very cordial. I'm uh, asking they, this. They 
Yeah, yeah. I'm asking this question because uh, a lot of aspirants have misconception in their mind with respect to the uh, the behavior of interview panel. Yeah, so yeah. that is why, yeah. Actually, they they do this uh, deliberately, right? Right. They, they don't have any intention to reject you. They don't have any animosity towards you. They just try to have a nice conversation with you. And they'll do, even if they grill you, that's also to check your confidence level. Right. So what was the du entire duration of your interview? Uh, actually, when I came out, I asked uh, that, he, that he was taking the time. It was 25 to 30 minutes. Okay, okay. So uh, sometimes more like it happens that we do not know the answer of any particular question which is being asked uh, from us by the interview panel, right? So yes. what should be the strategy at that at that situation? Whether uh, we should say that, sir, sir we, we I do not know that answer, or uh, or we can uh, blindly guess that question. So what should be the strategy with respect to that? Uh, see, there are two parts of, of your question. That one is you completely don't know the answer, then you have to honestly accept that you're sorry sir i'm not i'm not aware about this or sorry ma'am i'm not aware about this i'll read upon it that's the simple answer which you, which you don't have any idea and if you have a little less idea that okay is striking back of the mind that okay i've read that part but i'm not able to recall right now then you can take a guess if or uh, after asking them that uh, can i take a guess or uh, if they allow then take a guess otherwise you say that i don't able to recall right now there is a difference between recall and remember right. you say that i don't recall right now but i'll look upon it and i'll revise it again and if they wanted to ask you that happened in my interview is that i was not able to recall a particular question so i asked the ma'am was there and I said that, ma'am, I'm not able to recall that. And she uh, gave us a hint. Uh, she gave me a hint that, okay, that was that. Okay, then I uh, uh, remembered that and then I answered. Right, right. So if they are interested in you, they will give you a hint as well. And don't try to bluff because bluffing won't help you. Um, because they know very much about everything, right? right so right. you cannot <laughs> uh, you cannot be too much of smart and you don't have to be like, uh, so your wisdom there. There's right. not a right place to do that. Right, right. So I'm only if we talk about mock interview. So again, mock interview play a crucial role before the actual interview. So did you give any mock interview? Uh, yes, sir. I'll say that I give three mock interviews. First, I uh, gave with the edit app only uh, when it was in online, mode. and uh, two I've given in offline when uh, before just before my interview, okay. uh, just to get a uh, good confidence. Level. So the interview, the mock interview, which you have given at EduTab, so did you find that useful for your actual interview? Yes, yes definitely, definitely. Because uh, my main problem was that I used to tend to give answers very long and lengthy. And that was also advice uh, from these mock interview sessions that you do hold that uh, your answers are quite uh, long. And, uh, but uh, that actually gave a lot of feedback was helpful for me that I developed. I gave this uh, mock uh, what we had written in like two, three months before uh, my actual interview. So it, their feedback was very helpful. The search interview was very nice and they helped me a lot. I uh, developed those things which they have asked me. And uh, I guess that helped me very well. Very much. Great. So Molik, if we talk about, if, if, we talk, if I can say that, what message you want to give to the future aspirants with respect to any examination? <laughs> Firstly, I'm not a preacher. I don't know that I can that much of the guy to preach the students. But I'll say that if you want to uh, prepare anything, just do it and it will happen. Nobody can stop. Okay. So thank you, Molik. Thank you very much for giving your precious time at EduTap for uh, sharing your study uh, strategy. I, I hope that uh, the future aspirants will definitely get some insights from your journey how did you uh, how did you transform yourself from business to suddenly a eoa officer so okay. thank you very much once again and i on behalf of team edutap wish you all the very best for your future endeavors thank you thank you so much thank you so much. thank you malik all the best